want to walk through some of the steps and how to use these fair play cards um, for equitable relationship labor division. So um, in my other video, I kind of explained what the cards were and in a short summary, Eve Rodsky has written this book called Fair Play. A game changing solution for when you have too much to do and more life to live. And essentially, what this is is a time and anxiety saving system that offers couples a completely new way to divvy up domestic responsibilities. Rodsky interviewed more than 500 men and women from all walks of life to figure out what the invisible work in a family actually entails and how to get it done efficiently. With four easy to follow rules, 100 household tasks, and a figurative card game you play with your partner, Fair Play helps you prioritize what's important to your family and who should take the lead on every chore from laundry to homework to dinner. Um, ooh, right? It sounds really exciting. Now, if you read the book, it explains all the research behind it and how she devised the strategy. If you um, purchase the cards, the big card deck is available um, where you have all of the icons, they're very large. But if you go to the website, and I'll post the link, if you go to the website and sign up for the email list and also look at some of the descriptions of the cards online, you can sign up for the email list and you will get a free PDF that has the little icons. And the little icons are color coded. So there's red, black, orange, and pink for caregiving. And then the wild cards are kind of a weird whitish. So I took the free PDF and I sent it to the printer for color printing on a card stock and then I cut them out and laminated them and I attached magnets to the back of them so then I could use them on cookie sheets and then transfer them to our refrigerator. So it is a clear and easy to use visual for me and my husband. In our household, sometimes out of sight means out of mind. And these are, all of this is our life, right? All of these responsibilities, it's shown, pictured on of these things apply to life. So what I've done is I have taken the cards and I have split them up on tinier sheets and I have separated them. You see the ones at the bottom are the ones, they have a little coffee mug. Um, these are the daily grind cards. The ones at the top are kind of also probably daily tasks, but not as monotonous as some of the daily grind cards. Um, so the caregiving also has its set of daily grind cards. And um, here we have out and about. And then the magic. So you can see some of them have more daily grind, others have less daily grind. Um, if your partner was with you, we had a fun time originally sorting these out together. Um, it gave kind of a very hands-on feel to the materials to see how to go through it. So I would encourage you to try that because you know this is your life. Your life is always in your hands. Your life is a product of the work you do with your hands and your mind, you know? So sometimes, even though it's a game, it's not really a game. This is a very tactile, easy to use tool that will help you to visualize and really handle what is it, you know? And, and that's the nice part is when you hold that actual card in your hand, it can really give you that moment to sink in that this is more than just a picture on you know, an icon on this card, this represents 
many steps. This represents time. This represents energy spent. This represents careful thought and planning. And these things are constantly happening. So it's a really great system to help to visualize how and what and you know where life is split up. So on these four original boards, I haven't split up or started to deal anything with them. Um, I did, I have two bigger boards and if my husband was here with me, um, I would say, here's your board, here's my board. Um, I put the wild cards on one of our boards. I could split them up. It doesn't really, the wild cards apply to our shared life. And in our case, um, the wild cards are the first year of an infant's life. Uh, we have a seven month old baby. We're doing home renovations. We have some learning differences in our household, which can be kind of disruptive. My new job is always in action, right? And so is my husband. We're creative people, always blooming. And there's never enough money sometimes um, to fix and do and always be uh, on top of it, right? Life costs, costs. So everybody should always have, you're also, everybody's gonna start off with the golden three trifecta. You see it, the happy faces. So sustaining your adult friendships, taking care of yourself, and finding that special time you need to nourish yourself with whatever it is that kind of keeps you moving and grooving. And the unicorn space is something that is like difficult to achieve, but isn't difficult to achieve because ideally it is what makes you happy to be yourself. So in my case, um, right now I'm fulfilling not just work because I'm here, but this is my passion to share this kind of information with other people. So um, the I don't find the unicorn space card description just quick, but I did find for each card, you're thinking of the minimum standard of care you're kind of asking yourself, why is it important for us to hold this card and establish this standard in our home? So the first thing we're gonna do with any of these decks is you're gonna look them over and you're gonna start, you're gonna remove stuff that isn't important or that you don't do. Um, so in our house right now, like something like travel is non-existent. Um, right now, social plans for couples. I mean, we're not going out and about because it's pandemic, but we're still doing stuff at home. So I don't know, maybe it's applicable, maybe it's not applicable. Only we can decide what we wanna keep on our list of life. And that's why these can so uniquely be adapted to anybody's living situation. Even if you don't have children, 60 out of the 100 cards are still applicable. So it's, you know, really easy if you don't have kids, get rid of all the cards that don't have kids. You know, set those aside. You don't even have to deal with those. And for every card that you are dealing with, you know, for the person who's, who's got to do the task, you're supposed to be able to think about exactly what does it mean to meet the need on this card you have to plan how am I going to meet this need and then you have to meet that need. So in some houses, it's easier for the person who's doing the meal planning to also do the lunches, to also do the this. So they might hold a group of responsibilities. Um, the, the author does encourage not to split the deck with like responsibilities that are shared. In our case, we didn't feel that was uh, realistic um, or we just didn't want to do it that way. So, you know, there's no hard and fast rules to it. We are breaking the rules, but we're doing what works for us. So I am excited to go through these to show you um, kind of how what I figured out and what works and what doesn't work and show you the example of how it can work for you too. So thank you for watching and look for more. Take care.